So hello all of you. In this video we will be discussing the mock test paper issued by the institute for the December 22 foundation term for principles and practice of accounting. <coughs> so as we all know it's a 100 marks paper and it's uh, completely subjective in the sense that it is not MCQ in nature. There are six questions so let's start. Please keep in mind that in this paper not all questions are compulsory unlike the others. In this paper question number one is compulsory which means you have to attempt it and out of the remaining five questions as I said there are six questions in this paper out of the remaining five you have to do any four which means that you can leave out any one question. Okay. So starting with the very first question state with reasons whether the following statements are true or false. If the effect of errors committed cancel out, the errors will be called compensating errors and the trial balance will disagree. So compensating errors are actually those errors which cancel out each other. So this part is completely correct. However, for compensating errors, if there is a plus 500 somewhere, there is a simultaneous minus 500 somewhere else, which means eventually the trial balance will always agree. There will be no uh, discrepancy seen in the trial balance. Therefore, the statement is false. Accrual concept implies accounting on cash basis. This is of course wrong because the two concepts are accrual and cash. So accrual concept is basically when we account on due basis. Consignment account is of the nature of a real account. No, consignment account is a nominal account as we all know. In case the due date of a bill falls after the date of closing of the account, the interest from the date of closing to such due date is known as red ink interest. Right. This is exactly what is red ink interest that after closure of the account, the interest that is charged, it is called the red ink interest which is because the interest amount is written using a red colored pen in the current account. When there is no partnership deed prevails, the interest on loan of a partner to be paid is 6%. This is because when there is no partnership deed, that time we follow the uh, Indian Partnership Act and the Indian Partnership Act gives 6% as the rate of interest on capital. When shares are forfeited, the share capital account is debited with called up capital of shares forfeited and the share forfeiture account is credited with calls in arrear of shares forfeited. No, this part is correct. We do debit the share capital account with the called up amount. However, the credit to the share forfeiture account is not the amount of calls in arrear but the amount which was actually received. The amount which was actually received on the shares forfeited. So again this one is a false statement. <coughs> Change in accounting policy may have a material effect on the items of financial statement. Explain the statement with the help of an example. So this statement is more or less correct. So first in this answer what you have to do is you should define or at least explain in one line what is accounting policy and then you can go on to give two examples since they've asked for an example. So give an example accounting policy you can talk about um, let's say inventory valuation. Inventory valuation that you go from FIFO to let's say weighted average or the other way around something like that. So that is why you can give an example and then what do we have to show we have to show this material effect the material effect how can you show that you can say that material effect can only be decided once you quantify once you quantify something only then will you be able to decide whether the effect is material or not okay so this is a completely theoretical question classify the following errors under the three categories errors of omission commission and principle again an extremely easy question Credit sale wrongly passed through purchase book, error of commission. Because we haven't omitted anything and there is no mistake in our principle. This is just a mistake uh, which happened while making the accounts. So this one is commission. I will just write C 
this one is O, this one is C and this one is P. So the first one is error of commission. Machinery sold on credit to Mohan, recorded in journal proper but omitted to be posted. Very clearly, error of omission. Purchase from M, not recorded in subsidiary books. Again, we forgot to record it completely, so it's an error of omission. Goods worth 1520, purchased on credit from Ram, recorded in the purchase book as 1250. Again, this is an error of commission. Sale of furniture credited to sales account. This one is a error of principle. Because what principle is wrong? That sale of furniture should not be credited to the sales account. Sales account is only for sale of inventory or the services. Sale of furniture is actually sale of an asset. So it should be shown in the asset account itself. Moving on to question 2. The plant and machinery account of a factory shed showed a balance of 21,15,250 on 1st April 2020. Its accounts were made up on 31st March every year and depreciation written off at 10% per annum under diminishing balance method. On 1st July 2020, a new machinery, 1st July 2020, new machinery was acquired at a cost of 4,35,000 and installation charges incurred was 9,800. So basically, this machinery, while reading only, we can understand that 9800 will be capitalized. So we will have to take. Four 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 eight double zero. Four 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 eight double zero. On first July twenty twenty, a machine which had cost rupees four lakh sixteen thousand two hundred on first April two thousand seventeen, which means it was purchased on first April two thousand seventeen, and on first July twenty twenty it became obsolete, and and it was sold off for ninety thousand. Basically, ninety thousand is the salvage value from this machine. Another machine which had cost rupees 2,38,000 on 1st April 2018 was scrapped on the same date and realized nothing. On 1st September 2020, another new machinery was purchased for rupees 2,50,000. Write a plant and machinery account for the accounting year 2020-21, allowing the same rate of depreciation as in the past calculating depreciation to nearest multiple of rupee. So let's make a small T account over here only. We know that the opening balance is 21,15,250. So we can simply take that as two balance brought down. Two one one five two five zero. After that, the next information given to us is a purchase on first July. So on first July, we are purchasing one machinery. So purchases are shown as two bank. We know that the purchase has to be shown inclusive of the installation costs, which came to four 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 eight double zero. Then on 1st July, a machine which had cost of this much was sold off for 90,000. So since we are getting sales proceed of 90,000, let's record that at least 90,000 sales proceed. Now we have to calculate the depreciation which was charged on this machinery. So the cost was 416,200 and we are using 10% per annum diminishing balance method. 1st April, so there has to be no adjustment for time. So 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. No, so, uh, 17, 18, 18, 19, and 19, 20. Three years, full depreciation. And in the current year, we are selling it off on 1st July. So that means, so that means for the months of April, May and June. April, May and June which means 3 months. Which means 3 months. So 3 years, 3 months depreciation we have to calculate on this machinery. 416,200 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 that will give us the value after 3 years. 
and then we will charge three months depreciation which means this much this one is coming to three zero three four zero nine point eight zero three zero three four zero nine point eight zero which we will round off to three zero three four one zero and then after that we will charge ten percent into three by twelve which gives us seven five eight five depreciation for the current year current year depreciation is seven five eight five and value book value during sale is three zero three four one zero minus seven five eight five so three zero three four one zero minus seven five eight five giving us two nine five eight two five we sold this machinery for ninety thousand. We sold it for ninety thousand, which means obviously we have made a loss, a loss of two lakh five thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. Two lakh five thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. So, how do we make this entry in the machinery account? First of all, let's charge the depreciation of seven five eight five. Then we have to charge the loss. So by loss, loss is of two zero five eight two five two zero five eight two five. Next. Let's come to the next machinery. This one is done. Another machine which had cost two lakh thirty eight thousand on first April two thousand eighteen. This one was also scrapped off on first July twenty twenty. So from first April two thousand eighteen, we will have eighteen nineteen full, nineteen twenty full, and another three months. So basically, two years and. Three months. Cost was two lakh thirty eight thousand. Two lakh thirty eight thousand. Two lakh thirty eight thousand into point nine into point nine, giving us one nine two seven eight zero as value on first April twenty twenty. First April twenty twenty. This was my value. And for three months depreciation, three months depreciation will be into ten percent into three by twelve, which gives us four eight two zero. Four eight two zero. One nine two seven eight zero minus four eight two zero. One eight seven nine six zero was the book value on scrap. When we scrapped the machine. This was the book value one eight seven nine six zero. So naturally, this entire amount is our loss because we realized nothing on scrapping this machinery. So first, let's charge the depreciation of four eight two zero, and then the loss of one eight seven nine six zero. One eight seven nine six zero. Finally, what do we have to do? Finally. We have to calculate depreciation on the closing balance. Depreciation on the closing balance. So be very careful while doing this. This two one one five two five zero included the two machineries that were sold off. So from this we will subtract the value of both the machineries as on first April twenty twenty. So for this uh, for the second machine I have it written over here one nine two seven eight zero. And the first one, for the first one, the written down value was, I think, three zero three four one zero. Let me just check once: two zero five eight two five plus seven five eight five. <coughs> plus ninety thousand. Yes, three zero three four one zero. So this is basically. Let's calculate how much is this coming to one nine two seven eight zero 
minus 2115250. So this is coming as 1619060. 1619060. On this, we have to calculate 10% depreciation for the entire year because this much of machinery was there from the beginning to the very end. So that becomes 10% very easy, 161906. Uh, and this new machinery which we bought this year on 1st July 2020, it means we have to charge depreciation for 3 months. Depreciation for 3, uh, sorry, for 9 months. We have to charge depreciation for 9 months on this machinery. So that will be 444800 into 10% into 9 by 12 which means 33,360. Adding these two up will give us depreciation for the entire year, which means the final depreciation coming to 195266. And one more machinery. A new machinery on 1st September 2020. This one also we have to record 2,50,000 and depreciation on this will be 2,5,000 into 10%. 1st September 2020 means that we have to charge uh, depreciation for 7 months. September, October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March. 7 months so into 7 by 12 giving us 14583 14583 so now this total is coming to 14583 plus 33360 plus 161906 giving us a total of 209849 209849 now we have recorded everything all we have to do is total this up and write the balance and write the balance. You all can do the balancing. The balance to be carried down should come to 210411. Uh, 210411. Okay. So that is 2A. Uh, I hope it is clear. Not a very difficult sum. Very basic concepts from depreciation. Just some calculations are there which you have to be careful about when doing the sums. Let's move on to the next question. Prepare BRS of MS, uh, Messrs Singh Brothers on 30th June from the particulars given below. This one is a good question because it is beginning with a passbook balance. It is beginning with a passbook balance that to a debit one. So let's just um, second I think when is that working? Okay, moving on to the next question. Question 2B. They've given a very nice question because it, it begins with a passbook balance, that to a debit balance, which means that this is an overdraft balance. Debit balance in the passbook is an overdraft. Debit balance in the cash book, which means that it is favorable balance. So. Let's see, starting from the passbook balance, balance as per passbook given as debit is 75,000. So we know that since it's an overdraft balance, everything will go opposite. 
everything will go opposite. Next is a check worth 1200 directly deposited into bank by customer but no entry was made in the cash book. So we know that we have to move from the passbook balance to the cash book balance. So since this 1200 was not recorded in the cash book, ideally this should not have been recorded in the passbook as well. And what does this transaction do? It was directly deposited into the bank which means it, it supposedly increased our bank balance. So now we have to decrease it. But again since this question is for a debit balance, we are going to subtract, uh, we are going to add this back. We are going to add this back. This is part one, no this is part two. So part two, we will add back 1200. Next, part three, out of checks issued worth 1,2,000 uh, checks amounting to 60,000 only were presented for payment till 30th June which means that we issued checks for 1,2,000 but only 60,000 rupees worth checks were uh, actually presented for payment which means the remaining 42,000 the remaining 42,000 is yet to be uh, presented to the bank however in the cash book we have already deducted this 42,000 as well from our bank account so since we are moving towards the cash book over here what do we have to do we have to add this 42,000 we have to add this 42,000 next a check for 12,000 received and entered in the cash book but it was not sent to the bank so it is basically the exact opposite of part 3 wherein we have the check and we forgot to present it for the payment to the bank account so this will be subtracted this will be subtracted the amount was 12,000 part 5 checks worth rupees 60,000 had been sent to bank for collection but the collection was reported by the bank as under Checks collected before 30th June 42,000, checks collected on 10th July and checks collected on 12th July. So naturally these two checks will not feature in our uh, passbook, they will only feature in our cash book. So we have to make an adjustment for this 18,000. Again it's the same as the previous one. So again we will subtract this totaling to 18,000. So we will subtract this 18,000. Next we have the bank made a direct payment of 1800 which was not recorded in the cash book so we since we are moving towards the cash book we will assume that is this 1800 was not deducted from our account so we should ideally add it back but since we are doing everything opposite due to the overdraft we will be subtracting it subtracting 1800 interest on overdraft charged by the bank 4800 not recorded in cash book Again the same thing, 4800 should be added back, 4800 should be add, uh, sorry, subtracted. Bank charges worth 240 entered twice in cash book, which means that we have deducted this amount twice. So uh, even in the past book, we should deduct it twice to make it the same. Whereas insurance charges for 210 directly paid by bank was not at all entered in the cash book. So this 240 we will add back. This 240 we will add back. Bank charges 240 add back. And the insurance payment, the insurance payment of 210 will be subtracted. Credit side of bank column of cash book was undercast by 6000. Credit side of bank column means credit side is basically the payment side. In the cash book credit side is the payment side and debit side is the receipt side. So be undercast by 6000 are payments. So here also we have to do the same thing. We have to undercast our payments by 6000 which means we will be showing a subtraction we will be showing 
a subtraction. Lastly, a bill for 3000 discounted in May was dishonored on 30th June and noting charges of 100 paid by bank. So basically this means what happens when we dishonor a bill, when a bill is dishonored by someone, the bank will charge us the amount and they will also charge us the noting charges. Noting charges are basically the charges that the bank has to incur for noting that this bill has been dishonored. Okay, so a total of 3100 is owed by us to the bank. So again, the bank knows about this. However, we do not know about this yet in our cash book. So this also we will be subtracting. Let's total these up. 75,000 plus 1200 plus 42,000 plus 240. This is or uh, this entire thing is totaling to 118440. Just check whatever is coming here, just put that. And then after subtracting all of this, we are subtracting 12,000, 18,000, 1800, 4800. 210, 6000 and 3100. After subtracting all of this, the final answer is coming to 72,530 which is actually balanced as per cash book. And since this is also positive, it means that it's an overdraft balance or a credit balance. Overdraft balance or credit balance. Clear? Moving on to the next question. 3A. Hurry of Bangalore consigns 2000 cases of goods. 2000 cases of goods costing rupees 1000 each to Om of Hyderabad. Hari pays the following expenses in connection with consignment. So the expenses incurred by Hari while sending the consignment was carriage, fret and loading charges totaling to 1 lakh. 20, 60 and 20 totaling to 1 lakh rupees. Now out of these 2000 cases, 1400 were sold at 1400 rupees per case and 100 lost in transit, 200 still in transit which means 1400, 1500, 1700. So we can understand that 300 are in stock. 300 cases are remaining in stock at the end of this period. So now let's see what amount do we have to assign to each of these sets. For these 1400, we will assign the entire cost. For the 100 cases that have been lost in transit, we know that we have to assign this cost of 1000 and we have to add to this thousand uh, the amount which has to be apportioned from these charges incurred by Om, uh, incurred by Hari. Why? Because these charges have already been incurred before the goods were lost. The charges after the goods have reached Hari, reached Om, are not of any relevance in this case. Then this 200 cases which are still in transit, they will also be apportioned the same amount because they are still in transit. So these expenses are yet to be incurred for those cases. The remaining 300 which are in stock, the remaining 300 which are in stock, they have not been sold or packaged or anything. We assume that they have only been cleared from the dock or wherever uh, Ohm received the goods, right? So let's start. We, what do we have to do? We know that Ohm is entitled to a commission of 10% on gross sales. Sales we know is 1400 cases at 1400 per case, which means sales is 1960000 and 10% of this is basically 1,96,000. 1,96,000 is Ohm's commission. This much we can do mentally over here only. You are required to prepare consignment account and Ohm's account in the books of Hari. So for the consignment account, 
for the consignment account what all do we have to show in the consignment account we have to first show two goods sent on consignment goods sent were 2000 cases of 1000 each so that means 2000 and 2000 giving us 20 lakhs next the expenses which we incurred already before sending that is 1 lakh after that the expenses which the consignee incurred the expenses which the consignee incurred we forgot to total this 1734 51 and 51 and 12 gives us 63 so this will also come over here 63000 apart from that we have to show ohms commission ohms commission we have calculated as 196000 next coming to the credit side what all will go in the credit side ohms account will come showing the sales sales value we have already calculated as 1960000 then we will show loss in transit loss in transit were 100 and what amount has to be apportioned so we know 1 lakh rupees was incurred for 2000 cases 1 lakh rupees were incurred for 2000 cases so for each case so for each case we incurred 50 rupees 1 lakh for 2000 so for one case we incurred 50 rupees okay so which means that the cost after they have been sent cost after they have been sent is basically 1050 okay so 100 goods that have been lost in transit we will charge them at 1050 so this comes to 105000 similarly the goods in transit the goods still in transit these 200 goods they will also be charged at the same amount so this will come to 200 into 1050 giving us 21000 and finally the goods in stock the goods in stock the remaining 300 which have not been mentioned so for these we are assuming that only the clearing charges have been incurred the warehousing storage packing selling has not been incurred since they are still remaining in stock so this 17000 this 17000 was actually incurred for 1700 cases because ye 300 cases these 100 and this 200 they have still not been uh, able to reach ohm so this 17000 was for 1700 cases which means for each case 10 rupees for each case 10 rupees clearing charges were charged which means this 10 should be added so the goods in stock should be valued at 1060 the goods in stock should be valued at 1060 300 cases valued at 1060 giving us 31800 now finally we can balance out this and get our profit on consignment profit loss on consignment which should come to 23400 23400 clear we also have to make ohms account in ohms account what all do we have to show in ohms account firstly we will show this uh, expenses incurred by him the expenses incurred by him will be shown over here then then uh, we have also have to show the sales the sales that were made by him again consignment account apart from that what else do we have to show we also have to show the commission which we owe to him the commission which we owe to him that is triple zero. Triple zero. again we have to balance it out the balance should come as 1960000 Minus sixty three minus nine one lakh ninety six thousand coming to 
वन सेवन जीरो वन ट्रिपल जीरो वन सेवन जीरो वन ट्रिपल जीरो बैलेंस कैरेट डाउन क्लियर नॉट अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट सम यू जस्ट हैव टू रिमेंबर एट वॉट वैल्यू टू keep which set of goods the ones in transit the ones in stock the ones that have been sold etc all right next from the following details calculate the average due date again a relatively very easy sum just a few things which you have to keep in mind we will be seeing so the this 10000 bill Let's calculate the due date. First, let's calculate the due date of each bill. This bill, twenty eighth January, one month. Always remember plus three days of grace, plus three days of grace. So the due date for this one will be third March. Third March. It is twenty twenty one. So the month will February will end at twenty eight. February will end at twenty eight. So third March. This bill. 20th March two months, which means 20th June. Uh, sorry, 20th May plus three, 23rd May plus three, 23rd May. 12th July, one month, which means 12th August. Three days, 15th August. 15th August is a national holiday, and the rule is that if the due date is a national holiday or a public holiday, then the uh, due date after applying grace should be the exactly preceding day which in this case is 14th august which in this case is 14th august 10th august two months means 10th october plus 3 days 13th october 10th october plus 3 days 13th october next what do we have to do the earliest one is 3rd march earliest one is 3rd march so you will take 3rd march as our base date and then from 3rd march we will calculate How many days extra are the other bills outstanding for? Third March to twenty third May. Let's see. Third March to twenty third May, we have the entire April in between, and we have twenty seven days in March and twenty three days in May. so that gives us a total of 81 14th august is again we have full april may june and july we have 14 days of august and 27 days of march so that gives us a total of 164 days lastly 13th october april may june july august september all of these 6 months fully and another 13 days plus 27 days of march giving us a total of 224 days 224 days now the next step we all know is basically multiplying the number of days column multiplying the number of days column with the amount column the product we will sum up so since there is no space i am just summing it up on the calculator 10000 into 0 which is 0 Eighty-one into eight thousand is six lakh forty-eight thousand. Fourteen thousand into one sixty-four is twenty-two ninety-six hundred uh, thousand. Uh, Twelve thousand into two twenty-four gives us twenty-six eighty-eight thousand. So now, summing up all the products, we are getting fifty-six thirty-two triple zero. Fifty-six thirty-two triple zero. So. the average due date is calculated as base date plus summation of the products divided by summation of column a which is basically the amounts column in this case summation of product is 5632000 and summation of the amounts is 18000 and 14000 and 12000 giving a total of uh, 44000 So five six three two triple zero by forty four thousand, which is one twenty eight, and the base date is third March. Base date is third March plus one twenty eight days. So that will give us 
first let's take away 27 that will finish March then after that we have to complete April April has another 31 days sorry 30 days after that March April May again fully it will go June will also fully go then we have nine remaining so this will bring us to 9th July this will bring us to 9th July that is our average due date okay on 1st January 2022 P's account in Q's ledger showed a debit balance of 5000 the following transactions took place between Q and P during the quarter ended 31st March 2022 accounts were settled on 31st March by means of a check prepare an account current to be submitted by Q to P to be submitted by Q to P as on 31st March taking interest into account at 10% per annum calculate interest to the nearest rupee so we have to make an account current we have to make an account current and this account current will be sent uh, from Q to P from Q to P so basically we have to make this in the books of Q we have to make in books of Q which he can send to P let's make it we know the format is the date of course particulars amount additionally we have to make a days column and a product column to aid our interest calculation these two are to aid our interest calculation again the same thing on the other side as well amount days and product amount days and product beginning from the first one opening balance is 5000 debit P's account in Q's ledger so opening balance is 5000 And since it's one quarter, uh, since it's 31st, it is beginning on 31st March. No, it is beginning on 1st January. So 1st January to 31st March, which means 90 days. Jan, Feb and March 2022, mein, there are 90 days. Then, next we have Q sold goods to P. When you are appearing for the exam, you have to record each one separately. But right now, what I am going to do is I am just going to circle the transactions which are sales and the ones which are purchases. Okay. Remember, this is from the point of view of Q. So any goods sold by Q to P will be sales and any goods sent by P to Q will be the purchases. Alright. So using blue color to show all the sales q sold goods to p q received a promissory note this one we will deal with later p sold goods to q orange color to show purchases q to p again sale p returned goods to q this one <coughs> will be a sales return that will actually be recorded as a uh, on the same side as purchases so for now i'm circling it with orange sold goods to Q so P to Q 5600 is again this one Q sold goods to P so this is a sale this one is a sale P sold goods to Q again a purchase okay so on the purchase side we have these four transactions and let's quickly calculate the days the number of days this one is first Feb this one is 1st Feb. So 1st uh, Feb to 31st March. 1st Feb to 31st March will give us 58 days. 58 days. Next, uh, achha, this 6000 also we skipped. 11th Jan to 31st March. 11th Jan to 31st March means 28, 31 and from here another 20. Giving us a total of 
this one is 79 the 8200 is 4th feb so 4th feb will be 50 uh, 4th feb will be 55 3 days difference giving us 55 days 7th feb 7th feb will be another 3 days so 52 1st march 1st march will be just 30 days uh, orange color 30 days 18th march 18th march will be 13 days and 23rd march will be 8 days 23rd march will be 8 days so we have calculated the number of days ok now quickly if we put all of this first let's look at all the blues so 6079 8255 and one more we have 9213 right now coming to the orange side we have 10058052 10,058,052 we have 5,630 and 4,008 5,630, 4,008 ok product we can calculate very easily and fill in the column now the one thing which we left the one thing which we left Q received a promissory note from P due after 3 months on 24th January so a 24th January promissory note a 24th January promissory note will fall due when it will fall due 3 months which means J April 24 plus 3 days of grace means April 27 April 27 now always remember for the promissory notes what we do is since this promissory note is due after the date at which we are making this account we will subtract these 27 days we will subtract these 27 days into the amount which basically means promissory note will obviously be recorded on the right hand side so here we will record the promissory note of the amount was 5000 and days we will take 27 in negative because this will happen after the account has been sent so always remember this is how you treat the promissory note quickly if we find the products firstly balance of products The balance of products will come as let me just see from the solution because it is very time consuming to calculate this and it is nothing uh, very hard also so you can simply just jot down the products the balance of products is coming as 797600 it is coming as 797600 so now next step is to calculate the interest next step is to calculate the interest how do we calculate the interest the balance of products as on the date of payment divided by total number of days and the rate of interest was given as 10% so 10% for how many days for 797 600 days out of 365 this one is coming to approximately rupees 219 so this one will be 219 and of course zero days because it's coming along with the payment so to finally close this to finally close this we have to total up the amount columns and the balance will be the payment received or the payment made 3019 3019 ok 
the balance sheet of Sam, Saif and Samir as at 31st December 2021 stood as follows. We have the capital accounts, land building, investment, advertisement, suspense, life policy at surrender values, investment fluctuation reserve, general reserve, stock, debtors, provision for doubtful debt, cash and bank balance. Okay. Now Samir died on 31st March 22 and the following adjustments were agreed upon. Land and values to be appreciated by 50%. Land investment to be valued at 6% less than the cost. All debtors except 20% which basically means 20% provision has to be made. And the remaining should go as normal debtors. Stock to be reduced to 94%. Goodwill to be valued at one year's purchase of average profits of past five years. Sami's share of profit to the date of death to be calculated on the basis of average profits of three completed years immediately preceding the year of death. Profits for last five years are given. Life policies have been shown at surrender value which is 10% of sum assured which means the sum assured will be uh, divided by 10% of the values shown in the balance sheet. Annual premium of 1000 is payable every year on 1st August. You are required to pass necessary journal entries in the books of accounts of the reconstituted firm. Okay, so basically we have to pass the journal entries. Starting first of all, let's calculate the goodwill quickly. One year's purchase of average of past five years. Simply average these out 105 triple zero by five so goodwill is coming to 21,000 because it's just one year's purchase Sami's share of profit is on the basis of average profits of three completed years three completed years fully is this much so 18 16 and 20 18 16 and 20 divided by 3 coming to 18,000 coming to 18,000 now let's start with the journal entries. First journal entry of course we have to remove these life policies. We have to remove these life policies. We know that uh, Sami's life policy Sami's life policy will give us a payout of 1000 by 10%. 1000 by 10% because we, as we write the sum assured cut 10% is given in the balance sheet. So which gives us basically 10,000. This means 10,000. So first entry will be the insurance company is giving us ten thousand. Right now, this ten thousand, uh, Kelly, we had to pay thousand. We had to pay 1000 so it's like balance is 9000 and this will be distributed. The balance in the life policy account of 9000 will be distributed between these three. Since nothing is mentioned we will distribute it equally. We will distribute it equally as 3000, 3000, 3000. So life policy Sam, Saif and Samir. Sam, Saif and Samir. Capital account, capital account, capital account. 9000 distributed as 3, 3 and 3. Clear? Next, this life policy thing is sorted. Now next we move on to writing of this suspense. Writing of this suspense. This cannot stay if we are reconstituting the firm. So, this 37,800 again, it will have to be distributed in the same uh, 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio. So 37,800 by 3 gives us 12,600. This is a debit item. So all of their accounts will get debited. Sam capital debit, Saif debit and Samir debit. Twelve and we will write off advertisement suspense account of 37,800. We will write off advertisement suspense of this much. Next.
next what do we have to do next let's move on to the revaluations land and buildings to be appreciated by 50% currently land and building valued at 74000 so a 54% 50% appreciation would mean 37000 increasing the value of land and building by 37000 and sending it to revaluation account 37000 next investments so investment revaluation will of course take place through investment fluctuation reserve it will take place through investment fluctuation reserve 6% less than cost cost is 10000 which means 600 has to be reduced 600 has to be reduced so uh, investment fluctuation re uh, reserve will get debited since we are reducing the cost and we will credit the investment account by 600 right this is also done next all debtors all debtors are worth 20000 20% are considered doubtful which means 20000 into 20% 4000 provision is required 4000 provision is required we already have a 1600 provision which means additional provision of 2400 additional provision of 2400 is required stock to be reduced by 94% stock is 20000 6000 revaluation we have to do which means we have to redu uh, reduce 6% that is 1200 so passing a single journal entry through revaluation or you can also pass separate journal entries uh first let's pass for the debtors so revaluation debit 2400 to provision for doubtful debts to provision for doubtful debts created 2400 additional then revaluation debit uh 20000 can 6% we had to revalue so that gave us 1200 that gave us 1200 or you could have also merged these two entries both are acceptable equally next we have goodwill entry next we have the goodwill entry so goodwill was 21000 some divided again equally 7000 7000 and 7000 so samir share of goodwill should get equally divided between uh saif and sam which means 3500 and 3500 so for that the journal entry passed will be sam's capital debit saif's capital debit to samir because both of them have to pay out samir so they will each pay 3500 and 3500 so that samir gets 7000 share of his goodwill finally the 1500 uh, which is share of profit credited to his account share of profit of 1500 how will that come we know that 18000 was the entire year's profit 18000 was the entire year's profit we have to give him he died in he died in 31st march he died on 31st march and this is the balance sheet on 31st december which means the difference is basically of 3 months so 3 months worth of profit we have to give to him because these those 3 months he was there in the firm working for us so that means 18000 into 3 by 12 18000 into 3 by 12 now that is not it what is this this 18000 into 3 by 12 is the assumed profit which the firm would should have made in 3 months samir's share is only one third of this because two parts were also sam and saif's who are still in the partnership so finalizing this comes to 1500 so along with the goodwill this 1500 share of profit also has to be given this will of course be charged to pl suspense for now it will be charged to pl suspense for now okay finally all revaluations done all revaluations done
so that is why we will calculate the balance let's quickly see uh, I don't have all the entries so I will just refer to the solution and see what is the balance of revaluation land we had 37,000 credit then we had 3600 debit for stock and provision for doubtful debts so 37,000 and 3600 after that yes that's it so basically 33400 credit balance is lying in the revaluation account so we have to debit revaluation and of course this amount has to be divided equally between the three of them it has to be divided equally between the three of them Sev, Samir and Sam it is coming to triple one double three triple one double three so one rounding of one rupee we can add to any of them okay after that next step which we have to do is finish off the reserves finish off the reserves which reserve we have the investment fluctuation reserve and we have the general reserve so uh, general reserve is of general reserve is 8000 investment fluctuation remember we added 600 so total of 11000 sorry we subtracted 600 we subtracted 600 from the investment fluctuation so which means total may we have to distribute 8000 plus 2400 minus 600 that is 9800 9800 we again have to distribute equally divided by 3 giving us 3267 3267 one person will get 1 rupee less so again the uh, entry will be general reserve debit investment fluctuation reserve debit to Sev, Sam and Samir ok and finally we have to calculate the balance lying in Samir's capital account opening balance we have as 40,000 opening balance we have as 40,000 apart from that we have to make all the adjustments passed in our journal entries the net amount as I can see is coming to 53,300 53,300 this should go to his executor this should go to his executors account ok that finishes this sum next we have a final account sum which is quite easy uh, there aren't many So let's start. We have the trial balance. Closing stock value we have salary, tax, outstanding, 500 insurance, prepaid. So these two will go in liabilities as well as we have to adjust this in the expenses profit loss may as expenses we have to adjust and this insurance prepaid also will go in asset and we will have to subtract this from the uh, insurance amount shown over here interest accrued on investment this one will become an asset and we have to adjust this in the income interest on overdraft unpaid will be a liability and we have to adjust this as an expenditure provision for bad debts to be kept at 15,000 we already have at 10,000 so additional 5,000 has to be made additional 5,000 has to be made 
depreciation on furniture to be charged at 10%. So we have furniture balance as 16,000, so which means depreciation will be 1,600. Clear? So let's start with the balance sheet and PL. First, let's make the balance sheet since it's obviously easier. Or actually, let's start with the PL so that we automatically get our profit. And then we can make the So, I am making a small trading account over here only since it's very uh, inconvenient to keep shifting. We have purchased we have two purchase 1 lakh 20 we have this is not enough. Okay, so I'm making the debit side over here and the credit side over here. This one will be two purchase, one lakh twenty thousand. Sales return will go away from sales, so negative on credit side. Salaries. will come as an expenditure 25,000 we have to adjust this 1000 outstanding so plus outstanding salary of 1000 tax and insurance again over here showing 5000 now we have to add outstanding tax of 2000 and we have to subtract prepaid insurance of Three uh, of 500. <coughs> we have to subtract prepaid insurance of 500. <coughs> Next, we have bad debts. So, again, two bad debts 5000. Two de debtors will go in the balance sheet, investments in balance sheet, opening stock. 14,000 drawings will go in balance sheet furniture balance sheet depreciation we have to charge on furniture of 1600 bills receivable also balance sheet capital balance sheet OD balance sheet sales by sales is 90,000 purchase return Purchase return of 20,000 subtracted from your provision for bad debts. This 10,000 will go in balance sheet, but we have to make an additional provision of 5,000. So to provision for doubtful debts, 5,000. Creditors will go in balance sheet. Commission is a credit balance, which means this is commission earned by us. So by commission on, on the income side of 5,000, bills payable again will go in the balance sheet. Now closing stock of 45,000, interest accrued on investment by interest 2,100, interest on overdraft again an expenditure, two interest 3,000. Provision done, depreciation done. So now we can finalize our PL account. We can finalize our PL account. This is our trading account. Gross profit coming as, I'm just checking from here once, 11,000, right? Gross profit coming as 11,000.
okay so trading account is done next coming to the pl account pl account also we just have to balance everything salaries done tax insurance done provision for bad debts done depreciation done everything done so i think net we are getting a loss net we are getting a loss of 29000 all right so that finishes our balance sheet uh, sorry pl account coming to our balance sheet coming to our balance sheet uh, i will just erase this only we only need the net loss amount so capital account we have as 160 minus the loss of 29000 apart from that this one is done bank od we have of 20000 done provision for bad debts we will deal with let's see here we know that the final provision is of 15000 the final provision is of 15000 creditors we have 20000 bills payable we have 25000 now cash in hand 15000 purchase sale return salary tax insurance bad debtors 50000 investment 40000 opening stock does not feature in the balance sheet closing stock features in the balance sheet so we will just write that also quickly Forty-five thousand drawings will be subtracted from capital account. Furniture less depreciation. It will be shown net of depreciation. So sixteen thousand minus one thousand six hundred, which is fourteen thousand four hundred, and bills receivable of thirty thousand. bills receivable of 30000 now coming to the additional information closing stock we have adjusted outstanding salary and tax outstanding salary and tax totaling to 3000 will be shown on liability side out 500 prepaid insurance shown on asset side interest accrued Twenty one hundred interest unpaid three thousand provision done depreciation done so let's check if our balance sheet is matching now I think it should yes it is so. this one is also done all right <coughs> question number 5 ankit sports club <coughs> gives the following receipts and payments account for the year ended march 31 2022 they have given us the receipts and payment they have given us some balances of assets and liabilities 
He asked us to provide for depreciation, 10%, 20%, and 10%. Full depreciation on additions. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. So, which basically means that on closing balance only we can charge the depreciation, right? Donations are to be capitalized. Again, very important. You are required to prepare the club's opening balance sheet, income expenditure account, and closing balance sheet. A very typical sum, not too difficult, but yes, there is considerable amount of uh, things to be done in the sum. So first, let's make the opening balance sheet. Oh, for the opening balance sheet, we will be requiring this column. We will be requi uh, requiring this column. And why do we need the opening balance sheet? We need it to find out the opening uh, capital fund. We need it to find out the opening capital fund. Okay. So, again, liabilities on this side, assets on this side. We have library books, 1 lakh. Sports goods, 80,000. Furniture, 1 lakh. Subscription receivable of 50,000. Investment, 5 lakhs. Accrued interest, 6,000. Right? There is nothing else. Nothing else. Liabilities, we have outstanding expenses of salaries. Sorry, let's leave space for capital balance. So, outstanding salary, we have 10,000. Newspaper and periodicals, we have 4,000. Rent and taxes, we have 6,000. Electricity charges, we have 8,000. All of these are our outstandings. So, basically now, the uh, hmm. let's total these two up. I think the assets side. Ah, uh, just one thing we have to add is the cash and bank balance. The cash and bank balance opening is fifty two thousand. It is fifty two thousand. So one lakh eighty thousand. W another one lakh fifty thousand five lakhs six thousand and fifty two thousand giving a total of eight lakh eighty eight thousand eight lakh eighty eight thousand subtracting these from this we have the opening capital balance as eight lakh sixty thousand eight lakh Sixty thousand. Okay. Next, we have to make the income and expenditure account for the current year. Okay, so let's start. The income and expenditure account. Expenditure on this side, income on this side. First expenditure, salaries. Now salaries paid is 1,50,000. Out of this, we know 10,000 was outstanding last year. So 10,000 pertains to the previous year. Correct? So 1,50,000 minus 10,000 and 20,000 which are outstanding at the end of the year. 20,000 outstanding at end of year, which means salary chargeable to this year is actually 1,60,000. 1,60,000. Same goes for rent and taxes, electricity charges, newspapers and periodicals. So rent and taxes is 54,000. We will subtract the opening outstanding because this was actually paid for last year. And closing is another 6,000, which means net of 54 only. 
so rent and taxes 54000 electricity charges paid is 6000 for last year it was 8000 and closing we have 10000 so basically we have 2000 Sorry, eight thousand. My bad. Eight thousand. ठीक है. Next, we have a uh, sports good. So sports good is part of balance sheet. Library books part of balance sheet. Newspaper and periodicals we paid ten thousand eight hundred. Outstanding was four thousand of last year, and at the end of this year, we have five thousand. So net me for this year we have to charge a total of eleven thousand eight hundred. Eleven thousand eight hundred. miscellaneous expenses miscellaneous expenses is 54000 okay theek hai so salaries electricity charges rent and taxes newspapers and periodicals miscellaneous expenses all of these are done now finally we have to provide this depreciation so depreciation how will we calculate furniture and fixtures at 10% opening balance of furniture and fixtures is 1 lakhs opening balance is 1 lakh at this we will provide 10% so this is 10000 Sports goods pay twenty percent. Opening balance of sports goods is eighty thousand, and we also bought some sports goods of twenty thousand, which means again on one lakh we will be charging. So that gives us twenty thousand. Okay. Lastly, on library books. Library books one lakh opening balance and we purchased another one lakh so that gives us two lakhs and provision at ten percent so again twenty thousand right so total depreciation is fifty thousand total depreciation is fifty thousand okay coming to the income side for income subscription. Now subscription received in this year is three lakh forty eight thousand. For last year we already had a receivable of fifty thousand. We already had a receivable of fifty thousand. And for the current year we have another one lakh twenty outstanding, which means that subscription in terms of accrual basis we received. Three lakh forty-eight minus fifty thousand plus one lakh twenty thousand, which gives us four lakh eighteen thousand. So four lakh eighteen thousand on accrual basis. Donations we have to capitalize, so donations will go to the balance sheet directly. Let's just write balance sheet over here. Interest on investments is twelve thousand. Interest on investment again. We had, sorry, we had some interest accrued also of six thousand when uh, at the beginning of the year. So six thousand was accrued interest, and we received twelve thousand, which means that interest for this year is just six thousand. But uh, also, uh, wait, interest on investment. Oh, we have another accrual for closing also. So it basically means last year's we'll subtract 
and this years we will add giving a net of 12,000 right sundry receipts of 3,000 balancing the two we will get an excess an excess of 95,200 which has to be added to the capital which has to be added to the capital fund okay so now let's make the final balance sheet let's make the final balance sheet So now to make the final balance sheet, opening capital balance we have 8,60,000, the surplus we have of 95,200 and we also have to capitalize the donations received which is worth 1 lakh rupees. Apart from that, we have all of these liabilities outstanding. So 20,000, 5,000, 6,000 and 10,000. These liabilities are also outstanding. Coming to assets, assets name, furniture. Remember all assets have to be uh, given net of depreciation. They have to be given net of depreciation. So 1 lakh furniture minus 10,000 depreciation is 90,000. Sports goods 80,000 plus 20,000 which we bought minus the depreciation we charged 20,000. So that gives us a net of 80,000. Library books opening 1 lakh we bought another 1 lakh and charged 20,000 depreciation. So 1 lakh 80,000. Right? Sorry. 1 lakh 80,000. Next we have investment in government securities remaining the same because we haven't made any new investments. So this remains at 5 lakhs. Uh, subscription receivable, we have 1,20,000. Accrued interest, we have 6,000. Okay. And bank balance, cash or bank balance, we have 120,200. 120, right? So I think after this, our balance sheet should match everything we've covered okay now 5b following information is provided for mrs diana fiber for the year ended 31st march 22 karne we have to pass the closing entries okay quite easy this is something which we do anyway in final accounts so seamlessly so let's start with the opening uh, so we have opening inventory purchases carriage inwards wages sales return inwards return outward closing inventory factory rent okay so everything has to go to the PL account or the trading account all of them are trading account items now first of all 
purchases and return outward these should be netted out these should be netted out how we will transfer the returns outward balance to the purchases account balance okay so that will give us return outward 72000 debit to purchases of course we know return outward has a credit balance so we will debit the account next we will do the same for sales and return inward this time we will do sales debit <coughs> to return inwards because return inwards has a debit balance so this will be of 1 lakh okay now finally we can start transferring everything to the trading account how do we transfer to the trading account first of all let's take all the debit side items debit side items we have opening inventory we have purchases we have carriage inwards wages uh and factory rent all of these will go to the debit side sorry all of these will go to the debit side so basically we have to credit these accounts and we have to debit trading account we have to debit trading account opening inventory is 1 lakh purchases after netting out is 6 lakhs carriage inwards 30000 wages 50000 and factory rent 70000 right after all of this trading account this is totaling to 8 lakh 50000 coming to the credit side we have sales 11 lakhs minus 1 lakh so that is 10 lakhs and we have the closing inventory closing inventory of 2 lakhs closing inventory of 2 lakhs to the trading account we transfer this to the trading account 12 lakhs done finally netting these out this and this 12 lakh minus 8 lakh 50000 which is 3 lakh 50000 so this goes from the trading account to the pl account in the form of gross profit so trading account debit to gross profit account 3 lakh 50000 and finally this gross profit is transferred to the pl account same 3.5 lakhs 3.5 lakhs all right so very very easy sum very scoring as well coming to the last question question 6a we need to pass journal entries as our limited fourth treated 600 shares of 10 each fully called up held by ali for non payment of allotment of 3 final call of 4 paid application money of 3 these shares were reissued to kef for rupees 8 per share so basically 10 rupees ka share tha 3 was paid so whatever amount is paid we know goes to the forfeiture account and the 7 which was unpaid we cancel these calls we cancel these calls so for this the journal entry to be passed will be equity share capital debit equity share capital debit how much 600 shares ka 10 rupees so 600 into 10 that is 6000 and now we will cancel the calls we will cancel the equity share allotment that was 3 for 600 so 1800 we will cancel first and final call of 4 into 600 that is 2400 and the amount which we received goes to shares for feature we received 3 rupees on 600 shares that is again 1800 okay next next we have to reissue these shares reissue to kef at 8 per share which means the discount was of 2 rupees 2 rupees per share discount will be deducted from the forfeited shares account so first of all let's create the share capital six all the 600 shares are issued so 
will go to equity share. We are receiving eight rupees per share from KEF. So eight into six hundred, which is twenty. Sorry. Ha. Eight into six hundred, which is forty eight hundred. Bank debit and the balance, which is basically the discount. Of two rupees on the six hundred shares will go from the forfeited shares. Now forfeited shares actually had a balance of eighteen hundred. We have only used twelve hundred. So the remaining balance we have to transfer. Remaining balance of six hundred we have to transfer to the capital reserve. We have to transfer to the capital reserve. Okay. Next part, Mr. X, holder of twenty five hundred preference shares of hundred each, on which seventy per share called up, could not pay his dues on allotment and first call. So these two calls we will have to cancel, at each at twenty. Directors forfeited the above shares and reissued <coughs> two thousand of such shares to Mr. Y at rupees sixty per share, paid up as rupees seventy per share. Okay, so from this we can uh, see forty was for allotment, forty was for first call, which means thirty was on application, which Mr. X must have paid. So first of all, let's cancel the calls which we have created on Mr. X preference share capital. We will only cancel seventy rupees. We will only cancel seventy rupees for twenty five hundred shares. Which means one seventy five thousand. Cancelling allotment of twenty rupees. Cancelling first call again of twenty rupees. And finally, the share for future account will be created for the amount which we received. So twenty five hundred into. Thirty, which is seventy-five thousand. Okay, this is done. Now about the reissuing. About the reissuing, we have to be very careful. The twenty-five hundred shares were forfeited, but only two thousand are reissued. At what price? They are uh, reissued at sixty. They are reissued at sixty as seventy per share, paid up as seventy. So which basically means ten rupees discount we have given. Ten rupees per share discount has been given, so this ten rupees discount should come out from the share for future. Okay, so first of all, let's create the preference share capital. Two thousand shares as seventy paid up, which means one forty. Now out of this, we are receiving, we are receiving sixty rupees per share. So two thousand into sixty, so we are receiving only. And the remaining, we have to take from share for future. We have to take from share for future. Okay, this one is done. Now comes the main part: transferring the balance for each share. We had thirty rupees in the share for future account, and here we have only used ten rupees, which means for the two thousand shares which were reissued. Twenty rupees per share was still remaining in the share for future account. It was still remaining in the share for future account. So this forty thousand is actually the profit on the shares which we have reissued. So it should get transferred to the capital reserve account. Remember, the remaining five hundred shares are still lying forfeited. So the share for future for these five hundred shares should also be remaining intact. All right. Six B Symphony Limited issued three hundred lakh eight percent debentures of thousand each at a discount of six percent redeemable at a premium of five percent after three years, payable as rupees five hundred on application and four forty on allotment. You are required to prepare the necessary journal entries for issue of debentures. So first of all, application dictum three hundred lakh. 
तो लेट्स मेक एवरी थिंग इन लैक्स ओके वी विल नॉट बी राइटिंग सो मैनी जीरो ऊपर में जस्ट राइट रुपीज एंड लैक्स ओके नाउ ऑन इशू वी विल रिसीव मनी फ्रॉम द बैंक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थ्री हंड्रेड इन टू एप्लीकेशन मनी इज फाइव हंड्रेड सो बैंक डेबिट टू एट परसेंट डिबेंचर एप्लीकेशन एट परसेंट डिबेंचर एप्लीकेशन then we will create the debentures then we will create the debentures okay after creating the debentures we will start allotting them now for allotment for allotment remember we have to pass uh, in the same entry we also have to incorporate the loss on issue now what is the loss the loss consists of two parts one is the discount on issue and one is the premium on redemption these two together make up the loss on issue so discount on issue we know is 6% discount is 6% and premium is 5% so basically a total of 11% a total of 11% loss we are incurring 6% at the time of issue and 5% at the time of redemption so discount on issue is actually 300 into 1000 into 6% and premium is 300 into 1000 into 5% what will the journal entry be we will create the allotment we will create the allotment and we will book the loss we will book the loss now this will be transferred the discount portion and the allotment portion will go to the debentures account and the premium portion will go to a separate account called premium on redemption account it will go to premium on redemption account so allotment is 440 per debenture so 440 into 300 440 into 300 is 1 lakh Thirty-two. Loss on issue will be this plus this. Basically, eleven percent of three hundred into thousand. That is thirty-three thousand. Eight percent debentures will include this as well as the discount component. This as well as the discount component, which is basically one lakh fifty. And premium on redemption is. Five percent of three hundred and two thousand, which is fifteen thousand. All right. Finally, we will receive our allotment money. We will receive our allotment money, which was one lakh thirty two thousand, and it's done. Okay. If you want, you can transfer this to the PL account. however it is not necessary since we have only been asked for issue not for the entire year for the entire year if we would pass then we would also have to pass entries for the interest etc but it is not required for five marks last one classify the following expenditures as capital or revenue amount spent for replace replacement of a petrol driven engine by cng kits this is a major expenditure so it is capital in nature traveling expenses of directors for trips abroad for purchase of capital assets for purchase of capital assets so they have to be capitalized to the cost of the assets amount spent to reduce working expenses now this is not an expenditure which is incurred again and again in a recurring form but this is a one time expenditure usually that is spent so that the overall expenditures come down so again capital in nature insurance claim received on account of inventory damaged by fire revenue because it is for inventory expenses incurred on the repairs and white washing for the first time on purchase of an old factory an old factory has been purchased we are revamping it so these expenses will form part of our 
capital expenditure all right so that brings us to the end of the uh, accounts mock issued by the institute thank you all of you